Hey, hi guys, my name is Nagashekar and you are watching me on Take My Head channel. So in this video, we're going to talk about Accenture technical questions that are asked for free previous batches. If you are watching our channel for the first time, please do subscribe to our channel and click bell icon for instant notifications. And please don't forget us to follow us on Instagram and Telegram. Links are provided in the description. So without any delay, let's dive into the video. So we all know that Accenture is a company where it will not mainly focus on many technical questions for freshers. So these are some questions that are asked for previous batches. So uh, Accenture mainly focuses on the questions from resume and they will ask mainly questions from project. So now let's watch some of the questions and with answers that are asked for previous batches. So what is meant by an exception? Exceptional handling. Have you ever wondered that what kind of questions are asked in top product based company interviews? If the answer is yes, then we have a show where the host Love will walk you through the interview questions that are usually asked in the companies like you know, Google, Amazon, and LinkedIn, Netflix, etc. And how to answer them and respond in a way to get the job interview cra uh, cracked. If you are a student and wants to get placed in top product based company or if you are a working professional looking for a switch then this show is for you. You will also get an opportunity to come on live and interact with love on the spot and get your queries solved. So this, this kind of benefits are there for this show. So if you would like to watch these shows and access any other shows as well, have provided the link in description and get the an, an academy subscription from there and don't forget to use my coupon code where you will get 10% discount. For all those who want to become a software developer or have just become a software developer, an academy brings you a platform where you can get access to weekly shows which all you can watch live. Some of the shows that are coming live soon on an academy are hiring updates in startups and major tech companies, exam pattern and how to apply for them and how to approach code chef and you know pre-placement talk with HRs from different companies and ask them about their interview process and accelerating development by using real life projects and you know top 20 interview questions and how to solve them and you know listening to fellow coders their life journey about uh, how they are uh, get play how they got placed in fan companies and many other shows like this and you also have an option to interact with industry leaders and experts on the platform and you can get a chance to you know appear for mock interviews where you will get real time feedback and you can also improve your skills so you will get all this and much more so before going to this exception handling, now let's talk about what is an exception. So an exception is nothing but it is an unwanted or unexpected event that occurs during the normal flow of execution. Let's say if you are connecting to a database and the database is, does not exist. So at that point of time, we might get an exception. So if we get an exception, what we need to do is we need to handle that exception. In Lyman terms, Let's say you are moving from Mumbai to Pune and you are traveling by car. So while you are moving from Mumbai to Pune, there is a tire puncture for that car. So this tire puncture is an exception while you are traveling from Mumbai to Pune. So uh, if there is an exception like this, what we need to do is we need to do exception handling. So the exception handling for this uh, type of problems is we need to maintain a spare tire in that car okay now so in java in specific we are talking about java java is also coming up with exception handling mechanism so we the exception handling has five keywords where using these five keywords we are going to handle the exception so first one is using try second one is using catch third one is using finally fourth one is using throw and fifth one is using throws. So whatever the exception code that we are expecting that should be placed in try doc. Let's say if you have some handling mechanism for that exception that code should be placed in the catch block. Okay now and let's say after, whether the try block executed or whether the catch block executed in respect of these two we will write a block called as finally this finally block is used to perform the cleanup actions. What are cleanup actions? 
let's say if you connect to database and if you forget to disconnect that connection okay now then this finally is going to help us to uh, to disconnect that connection and also if you open a file using our code and if you forget to close that this finally block in that we can write to close that uh, uh, files and this is used for performing some cleanup actions and object removal things and also the throw is used to throw an exception okay now let's say if you have if you want to throw an exception let's say if you want to if you enter a bank and you are preparing a blank application and in that bank application if the bank bank balance amount is 2000 and if you are drawing 4000 from that then you need to show an exception called insufficient funds exception so that is an exception where we need to throw an explicit explicit exception so in that case we need to use throw keyword the throws keyword is used to bypass the exception handling let's say if there is exception handling in uh, m1 method then the this m1 method don't want to handle that exception then what it can do is it can bypass this exception handling to its parent method or calling method this is a use of throws keyword so there are some areas where exception handling can be done in any programming languages while opening non-existing non files. Okay, there, there is a chance of uh, exception and also while we are reading a file and that doesn't exist, there is a chance of coming an exception and also while we are writing the data into the desk and, data is, uh, and the desk is full or desk is unformatted. And one more scenario is if you write, if, you are, if your program was expecting user to enter an input, let's say if user enters the string input, but we are expecting int input from the user, at that point of time, we might get an exception. And also when user attempts to divide an integer with zero, this is a mathematical thing. Let's say if it is 10 by zero, in mathematics, we'll say it is infinity. But in programming languages like C++, Java or Python, we will say it as an exception that is divided by zero exception. That's all about this exception handling. So what is DML commands in DBMs? So as we all know that DML stands for data manipulation language. So in SQL commands, which deals with the data manipulation. So after the creation of tables, what we need to do is we need to manipulate the uh, the data. So for manipulation, we do have four things. First one is select. So the select command is used to retrieve the data. So let's say there is some data in a table A. So what we need to do is what this select is doing is select is, is querying or retrieving the data from this table. The insert command is used to insert the data into table. Okay now. So let's say if there is uh, two columns called A, B, C. If I want to insert data, what I can do is I can do insert into table table name and values. I can insert values like one, two, three. Okay now. So this insert is used to insert the data into the table. And update command. The update command is used for modifying or updating the existing table that is present in the data. Let's say if the, if I want to change the value of one, what I can do is I can use the update command and I can use, I can edit the values or I can update the values that are present in the database. And there is one more command called delete, which is used to delete the records from the table. Let's say if there is a record with one, two, three. If I want to delete this record, what I can do is I can use the delete command. So these are the four commands that are present in DML. What is the difference between call by value and call by reference? So before going to this call by value and call by reference, let us talk the difference between formal parameter and the actual parameter. So the values that are uh, that are defined in the function call is known as an actual parameters, and the the parameters which are defined in the function definition is called as formal parameters. So in call by value, if there is change in this formal parameter, it doesn't affect the actual parameters. Let's take the example of the swap of a two, two numbers program and let us see what is call by value and what is call by reference. So in main function, I am going to declare two variables a and b and I am passing these two variables, uh, two variables this, to this function called swap. 
So here in this swap, what I am going to do is, I am going to swap, I am going to swap these two numbers. So the value of x is 10 and the value of, let's say value of y is 20. So after swapping, using this temporary variable, the value and value of x comma y becomes 20 and 10. So if I print the value of x, the value of x and y, then the values will be 20 and 10. So here there is change in this formal parameters. Now what I am doing is after this function call, what I am doing is I am going to print the value of a comma b. So the value of a comma b is still 10 and 20. See here the formal parameters are changing but not actual parameters. Coming to this call by reference, so here instead of values a comma b, what I am doing is I am passing the addresses of a comma b. Let's say the address of a is 1010 and the address of b is uh, 2010. So the values are 10 and 20. What I am doing here is I am passing the addresses of a comma b to the swap function. So the here the ad, see, see the, the value of see the star x represents the value at that particular location. So the x here here the address is 1010 and the value at that address is 10. Similarly the star y represents the value at that particular location. So here the value at that particular location is 20. So now what I am doing is I am doing the similar swapping and here I am printing, see after swapping here, the swapping is done with respect to addresses, not with respect to the values. So here a, b and it is 1, 0, 1, uh, 2, 0, 1, 0. So what I am doing is t is equal to star of x. So here what I am doing is uh, I am storing the uh, here star of x is 10 and star of y is 20 and what I am doing is t is equal to star of x so the value of star of x is 10 so the value of t is becoming 10 and the star of y is, is assigned to star of x so the star of y is uh, 20 so what I am doing is I am uh, replacing the the value of x with y that means the, I am replacing the value of b with the value of a so here I am not doing here I am directly doing it in the location so here the value of 10 and 20 will be swapped with 20 and 10 okay now so if I print the value of x and y after swapping it will be 20 and 10 so if I access the value of a and b so if access of, if, if, if you access the value of a and b it will be 20 and 10 not 10 and 20 because we are directly changing that values in the address not uh, not, not we are creating the separate variables so in call by value for if the act if the formal parameter changes the actual will not change here in call by reference actual and parameter actual and formal parameters will change that is the difference between actual parameters and formal parameters Talk about the significance of static keyword so the static keyword can be signified in four areas what if a variable is declared as static what if a method is declared as static what if a class is declared as static and what if a block is declared as an as static now let's talk about what if a variable is declared as static so if a variable is declared as static then a single copy of variable and it is divided among all the objects in the class level let's say let's say if i define a class and if, if that class, if I want to create n number of objects, let's say I am creating object 1, object 2 and object 3 and if I declare a static variable, this static variable is shared among the all the objects. So single copy will be shared among the all the objects if I define a static variable. What if if I declare a method as static so if I de define a method as static then we can call that method directly without creating an object let's say if there is a method called m1 uh, with the static how can I call that method m1 I can call that m1 method without the static variable let's say let, let's don't talk about the static if I want to call this method I can call this method by creating an object only without object creation I cannot call that method Okay now, so if I don't want to create an object and if I if I still want to call that object, still I want to call that method, then we can use a keyword called static. If you notice, public static void main, so main is a method where we are not creating any class. That is the reason why it is defined as static. 
and similarly if i want to uh, define uh, if i want to call a static data that we can access that in static methods okay without creating any object so what is the significance of static class so before we go to that static class you need to know about nested classes or inner classes so class inside a class is known as an inner class or static class so a class if i made a, a outer class to be static or inner class to be static okay na a class can be made as static only if there is next nested class if there is no static then we cannot if there is no inner classes then we cannot call this uh, we cannot use this static keyword and the static cannot direct uh, it doesn't need any reference for outer class okay na if i if let's say uh, if i want to access uh, and methods or data which is present in the static method which is present in the inner method i can directly call them without creating the reference similarly what is the what is the need of static block the static block can be called only once and it can be used for static variable initialization or it uh, it, it is it is only called once and it is called when class is loaded let's say if you write a static block and if you print something uh, this will be executed before the main method will be executed so this is the significance of static keyword that's all for this video guys thank you for watching